the Rwandan spirit has never died. And today, this spirit leads us into a brighter future. I apologize uh, if I uh, change hats every now and then, like I mentioned, uh, in different capacities. Uh, but just to, to have a, a clear idea, um, allow me to take this story just a little bit off the genocide. Um, in ab about last year, so this is another, when I, when I, I, sometimes I do write some, some articles uh, depending on the, usually the atmosphere of things. So. Um, in 2011, there was, I'm sure some of you uh, uh, saw it before, uh, the they magazine, uh, The Economist, they, they ran a story, and this was about Ethiopia, uh, and the headline was, um, Hunger in the Horn of Africa. So, the reason I'm mentioning this is that things that come out there create different perceptions. And this this magazine was targeted for the Western audience, um, and from there people automatically think that Ethiopia is a hungry country. Not just Ethiopia; every other country that touches on Ethiopia must be hungry. Uh, but then it, that might be true; it might be accurate because actually, in fact, in, as you may remember, in the 80s, Ethiopia was starving. But that doesn't actually mean that 10, 15, 20 years after that, the situation is still the same. What it does mean is that that perception that has been created by a simple cover of a magazine is lasting in terms of how people perceive a certain country. Uh, and it has, the implications are, are larger than, than we first think because if, uh, if a country is trying to attract investment, they are unable to, to now all of a sudden show that they're actually a country that is ready to consume, be a market for a new company, because perceptions for the, that were created for the Western audience, this investor, he, the minute you mention Ethiopia, they will say next, because he has a perception. That they don't spend a lot of time to, to research about a country. They have these small perceptions about what it is. Uh, is there corruption in Nigeria? Is there, no, there isn't corruption. Okay, let's look at that. But that starts from a simple thing, just like a magazine uh, cover. Um, and so the article I wrote about that time was, I was giving different examples, to talking about like that economics magazine. Uh, but then bringing in Rwanda, it was after we'd seen a barrage of uh, documentaries that somehow want to show a different side of what happened in the genocide. Uh, 